Hi everyone, so we'll wait a little bit that people connect themselves and we're going to start. So it's my first time uh, doing a webinar, so uh, I hope you cope with me. Uh, if I have any uh, technical problem, I can see the attendees list, uh, eight people have connected. Uh, I hope we do that in English for someone that, that doesn't speak French. I see a lot of uh, attendees uh, speak French but uh, the presentation is in English. So we'll begin in uh, just one minute. All right, so we're going to start there. Uh, I'll just make a little introduction. Uh, I'm Yann Camus. I've been working with uh, SGS, uh, the Geostat team, and uh, geological SGS Geological Services. Uh, so for uh, for 18 years since the year 2000, and I've been doing uh, mineral mineral resource uh, all the time. And so today I'm going to talk to you about our software that we develop in-house, SGS Genesis, uh, and especially about uh, technology that we've been developing to try to optimize uh, our time when we do 3D modeling is the planar envelopes. And um, it's especially efficient at thin vein modeling. Now I'll explain uh, you can maximize your screen if you want. So I'll explain with uh, some shapes that I, I, I did a couple of years ago. So if you have one sectional interpretation here and another section a little bit uh, further here, maybe 50 meters apart. So, so there's some drill holes on this section and on this section. But actually your interpretation is of different angle. This one dips towards me and this side dips towards you. And the problem with that is uh, the 3D shape that will be modeled makes a kink like this. And right now the kink, I'm lucky because it did one uh, connection between the points here and the same thing under here. And so the volume has no problem, like it will be reasonable. It's not, it's not nice, but it will not be biased. So uh, the volume represents well the interpretation on my sections. But the software could also decide to do the shape differently. So this is the same interpretations like this the same interpretations on the sections, but now it linked two points here and two points there. And right in the middle here, there is a very big thickness. I hope you can see. It's now very thick. And this volume is not, um, it is not proven by any drill hole. And that's a really big problem. So here comes the planar envelopes. It will never do this kind of thing. So a little bit of presentation on SGS Geological Services. Uh, so what we do, uh, geological resource reserves, 3D modeling, estimation, and geostatistics. We give exploration services. So we do the targeting, uh, planning, and project management. We do technical reports, obviously, in our 43101, York, Jork and Samrek. We do sample selection for metallurgical testing because SGS does a lot of metallurgical testing. So we've been involved more and more in that field. And we also do the metallurgical 3D modeling. We use the machine learning uh, to, especially for targeting. And, uh, and so that helps also uh, 
give a little bit more mine life to projects. Uh, we do mine audits, uh, mineral resource reserves, mine to plant reconciliation and technical due diligence. We do training and education, right now the first webinar. Uh, mineral project valuations and mining engineering and geotechnical services and in English, Spanish and French. All right, and we've done over 1,300 projects in 40 countries. So let's jump to Genesis now. So I'll share with you my Emerald project. So it's really funny, we rarely work on Emeralds, but uh, so this project, I, so I select any object in my screen, I press S for spin and I spin my model like this. And I can see uh, that the display is not as I would like. All right, so now it's displaying things properly. And in that project, um, it's an emerald project, but we don't have the actual emeralds in, um, assayed in the drill hole, but we use the lithium as a proxy to do the modeling of the volumes. Uh, so we'll be working on the lithium. You can see the, the scale here of colors on the left. Um, so everything under 50 ppms is just uh, not appearing and it's only what's over 50 that appears. And those two shapes here have been modeled in the usual way. So what we do is we have some sections and we do sectional interpretations and then we link them all and we do a mesh. And that's when some triangles may uh, give some very big volumes or uh, are too thin volumes also, and we don't like that. And you can see here, some of the triangles are going that way here and under the shape is doing something different. So that's where the problem can come. Okay, so let's jump, I'll just make them invisible. I double click on them, set invisible, and this one too, set invisible. And I'll just create some new shapes uh, with the planar envelopes. So first I want to create a set of mineralized intervals. So what is a mineralized intervals is, is a from to an interval in a drill hole that I think is mineralized and should go together. And right now I should have, I have no mineralized intervals and I can create on the upper right corner, I can create an intervals directly by cutoff. That's really great. It's optimizing uh, the zones for me. So I go on the lithium, I pick the variable that I want to optimize on. Uh, we can bunch a couple of different variables by calculating uh, NSR value, for example. So the interval set name, I'll just put lithium set. The cutoff grade I've been working with is 50. Uh, I can use a multiple cutoff grade. So this will create multiple set at multiple cutoffs. I won't uh, get into that today. The mining pillars, that's interesting. Uh, if there's a, a bunch of material uh, over that size here or under that, uh, over that size, I will never uh, try to put them together with some mineralized uh, material because I, I think that I I'm, I'm, might be able to leave it on the ground. So that's really useful. And the minimal length, I'll put five meters at least to get uh, some good zones. And in that case, I'll erase uh, anything that's under the minimal length. And I'll just press OK. It went through already all my drill holes because the database is quite small. And it optimized the intervals right here. So you can see that it did uh, some zones over my assays. Now I will shut off my assays and I can, from there I can work only on my mineralized intervals. 
Uh, one thing I like, if here I think that these two should be linked together, I can double click on the mineralized interval, double click on the other one, and I have a script. Oh, it's not working. So I have a script that I could go open, but right now um, it's not there in my software. So I'll just, but it, it will enable me to decide whether I want to uh, join them together or not by doing calculation. And I'll show you how I can decide whether or not I want to join them together. So I'll share with you uh, my presentation, PowerPoint slideshow. So for example, if that's a drill hole here and uh, I have four intervals with continuously over the cutoff grade, I might ask myself if I want to join this one and this one together. And the way I will decide is I ask myself if that interval here um, will, uh, is still above cutoff grade with the gap here. And same thing with, uh, with the other side. And if it passes with the, the cutoff grade in both cases, then I might decide, boom, I'll make a single, single interval. So let's jump right back. So it's fairly easy to see in that model that I have a general shape here that I want to model. And so I'll show you how I deal uh, with the planar envelopes. So I, I select a mineralized interval and I do the properties fast. I change properties fast. I select, so I pass over now and you see that the mineralized intervals, they highlight themselves in yellow like this. And I just try to make something that I find reasonable Let's say I'm finished right now. I'm happy enough with that. And when I press enter, it asks me for a zone tag, a zone name, and I say one, for example. And now if I click on any of these mineralized intervals, it will say tag one, and I have the option to generate a planar envelope. That's what I click. So the first uh, screen is pretty much uh, some variables that I won't play with and I don't often play with. In the prism properties, that's the extent of my zone. So that's very important and I can play with the extent. So I'll create a convex hull so it will make a big shape um, uh, around those intervals. Uh, I'll use uh, enclosing circle, guess uh, the resolution. So a point every five meters is enough. I don't need a whole lot of points. Um, and the margin is the exterior extrapolation. I'll put 15 meters for now and see how it's like. And I just say, okay. So I just want to optimize the, the number one zone and I say okay and now you can see the shape also you can see the extent this is a prism we called so this is the extent of my envelope and I'll change uh, the way it's shown I'll put flat appearance and red and this is how it looks like in three dimensions and as you can see uh, it will do uh, some triangles on one side like this, and it will do the same triangles on the other side. And so there will never be some crossings between the... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're seeing the PowerPoint presentation right now. Share. I share my screen. That's much easier. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so I'll, I'll do it again. So I'll delete my envelope. I'll delete the extents. Okay. And 
I think you didn't see also how I tagged the mineralized intervals. So I might as well and be uh, so I might as well uh, change them all. So I'll go to home. I will fast change my properties of all the mineralized intervals that you see on the screen like this. I will reset it to no zone and I will do it again. So I use that fast mode by dragging here. I double click on a mineralized interval. I change my properties fast like this. Okay, I tried to make something interesting in 3D, so maybe that's all going together and I'm happy with it. So I press enter, I change my zone to one, I say okay, I double click on that mineralized interval right there, I say general planar, generate planar envelope. So this first screen I don't touch usually, the prism properties I often change. I'll create a convex hull, so it will make a big shape around my mineralized intervals. Uh, I use interval and closing circle. A resolution of five meters is great, not too many points. And the margin is the exterior, exterior extents or extrapolation I want, so 10 meters is good. I'll just say yes to make just one uh, planar envelope, okay. Now I can see that. I'll change the color of my shape to red, the shading to flat. And, and so you can see that one triangle on the top here that it made, there is the same triangle to the bottom of it. So there will never be intersecting triangles and also the thickness will be very, very regular. It will not change thickness like you were seeing uh, in other types of meshing. So this is very interesting. Now I can see that there's some other mineralized intervals that should be included in that zone. So I can go and change the properties of uh, these and also this one, for example. I press enter, I change the zones to one, then I double click on this envelope, update envelope, and say okay. And now it did, uh, it changed the shape to what it should be. And I can see that here, there is a strange shape and I don't like that, so I'll change the tagging on that, uh, on, on those mineralized intervals. Properties fast, enter, I'll remove the one, and these ones are probably better. Press enter, change to one, update the envelope. All right, now it's getting like I want. Maybe here I don't want such an extent, and here there is one drill hole that has nothing in it. So I, I want to change the shape so that it, it doesn't go over that drill hole here. So also the extents of uh, that zone, I want to make it bigger. So first I want to make it bigger, so update envelope, the second one with three dots, so I can change the settings of my envelope. I will put here a 40 meter extent. All right, so that I like better. And now I'll change the extent of my zone. So I double click on the extent that has been generated automatically. I can uh, modify its limits. And I can see that here is where there's no mineralized interval. And I want that to be not included in my shape. And, uh, 
And this one, we could argue that we don't want it in the shape also, but we can leave it. Um, and then I think that this one also, also um, this mineralized interval is uh, very, very far down. So it's not at the same, uh, I'll insert a point here and I'll just do like this. So I make whatever shape I think is good. And then I double click on the envelope and I can update it. And here is a shape that I think is really interesting. All right, so you can prepare some questions for afterwards. Uh, I see that two, two participants raised, raised their hands and it's probably uh, that you weren't seeing what you should. So I'll just go there. Um, uh, this is interesting question and Okay, uh, yes, uh, can we have the, the presentation? So this uh, is recorded and we will send to everyone uh, attending uh, that are registered, we will send the recording and the Genesis file we're using, can, we, uh, can you have it? Well, for the moment, uh, no, because uh, it's, um, all the data is uh, the data from a client and uh, so, uh, we probably uh, could not uh, send that to the participants, but you can use the demo file that is installed uh, when you install Genesis. And if you don't have uh, the regular Genesis, you can go on the Geostat website and uh, download the demo Genesis, and you will be able to open the demo file from there and just check the software out. All right. So, uh, this is the planar envelope and now um, I, I want to show you how I can create a block model really fast in there. Uh, we have a few minutes. I wanted to make the presentation 30 minutes and afterwards uh, there will be a question Q&A time. So inside the block models here I just pressed on B because I'm really used to the shortcuts. I go to file, new, do you want to import the schema? I don't have any block models right now. So it's, uh, so all the variables are already okay for my project. I see that in the block grid, the block size is not very, uh, so not so great. So I'll change the block size to three, 10, 10 and five or Z because it's thin veins that are quite horizontal. Uh, block discretization, I can put two, two. This is uh, nice. I can select, so the envelope, the volume that I just created. I will use a fixed thickness in my case and I'll just say okay. It's generating the block model, 8%. Thank you, Guy. So uh, two questions already on the planar envelope. Uh, so one of the question is uh, the information of one triangle. So the triangles, they are made uh, between, between the drill hole information. And the triangle that is done with three drill holes will uh, have the, the average thickness of these three interval. Um, and also it will have the grade inside this triangle. And all the triangles gets uh, their own thicknesses from the three corners and they will have some grades uh, from the drill holes. And for any extrapolated uh, triangle, it will, the, the thickness of the, the, the points will be extrapolated from uh, the drill holes and uh, the, 
the regular way to extrapolate it is inverse distance to exponent uh, 10. Um, and also for the grade, uh, it's uh, inverse square distance because that's what we uh, most often do. Um, and for um, uh, the location also in, uh, in elevation, a relative elevation, uh, it's exponent um, distance, exponent 10. Uh, and you can change all these, uh, all these uh, exponents as you want, so you can see. So the block model is, is uh, done. I'll show you the block model now. It didn't work out. Yes, I know what happened. Uh, so uh, that's, <laughs> that's what happened when we do things live. Uh, when I double click on a planar envelope, um, I want to, to check the information on uh, some triangles. So I can do edit envelope here, and I can see that now uh, all the triangles are separated. I'll choose one triangle that is in between three drill holes, this one, for example. And so this one will have uh, the volume that is exact and also its grade and some uh, different things like the tonnage, the area in two dimensions, the area in three dimensions, the average thickness from the volume divided by the 2D area, and the average density in that case, 2.7. All right. When I press escape, I exit that mode. And now uh, if I select the whole envelope, this envelope, it, it has all the tonnage areas uh, and average thickness also in the grade. So that's really a, a really good uh, feature. And I'll, I'll try to, Actually, the, the blocks there are, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They are not, there's 700,000 blocks, but the problem is the color of the, the blocks. They are all at minus one, so I have to change them to black in order to see them. So please, if you have other questions, uh, you can uh, tell me. Whoa. Oh, I forgot to um, create the block model inside the envelope to select the envelope. So I'll do it again import in that case uh, the settings from that block model limit the envelope from um, oh I it was the wrong envelope that I selected okay that should be more like it okay so I have a thousand blocks now that's more like it all right like this and I'll do a quick uh, estimation of the block model. So I'll create a, an ellipsoid. So I know the uh, orientation of that zone should be really close to that. I'll do fairly flat ellipsoid, search ellipsoid. I'll put it uh, blue. So now I'll set the ellipsoid center on my block model somewhere, just so you can see it. So here it is, I like that. Inside the block model, I'll delete my huge block model. In the estimation settings, I'll go to lithium, estimate, set estimation, I'll inverse square distance, exponent two, I'll keep that as is. So there will be just one pass. The composite set, I'll, I will create the composites. The ellipsoid, I choose the default one that I just created. Minimum composites, I'll put two. 
maximum 10. Uh, and I will keep everything as is. All right, so estimation settings are okay. I'll create my composites. So they will be inside my mineralized intervals. It will be some uh, regular length, length of intervals. I will put two meters, minimum zero. Okay, continue. It created 248 composites. I can look at them. So like this. So they seem to, oh, they, they are everywhere. Uh, even not inside my envelope, but I will do the estimation now. It's not, it's not perfect. Um, I, I can do something really quick. I'll try it live. So I'll extract whatever is inside the envelope. Planar envelope. It will be extracted. So now we have 110. So here they are, much better. I'll go in my block model, change the estimation settings for the lithium. In the search here, the composite set will be extracted. Okay, I'll do estimate. Okay, let's look at the block model now. I have some black black block, block, um, blocks, so they are unestimated. For now, I'll put them as white. That means not visible. And I'll remove the ellipsoid. And so that's what I did in a few minutes using the planar envelopes and the genesis. I'll save my project. And so that's uh, the end of my presentation today. And I'd like to know if you have uh, more questions, please. So maybe uh, there's one question. Okay. Hi. I'll share Genesis. Okay. So while, while we, oh, okay, can you make contiguous envelopes without overlaps or gaps? Okay, so uh, tell me if I understand well your question. So the idea would be, um, can I do another envelope on this side, for example, that will not cross over this one? Uh, this is one possibility or the other one would be can I do another planar envelope under under it like in layers and make sure that the volumes they, they don't overlap also and if I want maybe they, they would uh, uh, fill the, the space completely or maybe there would be an option of uh, them not to feel them fee fill the volume completely. For example, one volume could start down there and then go up, 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 and then um, join join this one. So this is a good question. Uh, one thing that uh, we've been uh, working on uh, is that very often, like we see in that um, model. The intervals, there are some intervals right very close to the other zone here. Um, so if I want to make one zone out of it, then that new zone could overlap with the zone that is under. So I f um, there, there's some ways we can change manually the location of some parts of the envelope. Uh, that yes. Um, and I think there is an automatic way also to make sure that they don't cross over and that works uh, sometimes. Um, I'll, I'll just show you right now I, how I can change uh, 
uh, one envelope manually uh, because I think that's very important. So for example, in that location, maybe we, we want to change what's going on with the envelope. So I'll just jump on that section and that's where I want to change the envelope. I'll change the view a little bit. So now I will create a geoline and I'll remove the fast mode. I'll start my geoline and maybe I want it very thin and right here, very low. For example, here. So let's say this is what I want. I tag it one um, and I'll just say okay. And now uh, when I double click on the envelope, I want to add the information of that geoline. So here it's selecting the prism. I'll just rotate to, oh, this is a planar envelope. So I'll set interval polylines. And I'll select the, the geoline that I just created. And it updated it to, to that location and also that thickness very easily. And now I can check in three dimensions that it's doing what I want. So this is one thing that we can do. But if we don't want to do things too um, manually, uh, there's also uh, uh, an automatic way to not have crossovers between envelopes. So Olivier will uh, help me do that. So I double click on the planar envelope here. And there is the, there is one, one setting here. Maybe it's the set envelope con cutting constraint. So, and then I select the other envelopes that I don't want crossover with, and it will adapt automatically. So uh, I'll try to, to create a new envelope from those intervals right there. There's four that I think are very interesting. So I'll, okay, this is the mineralize interval. I'll, I have to go to fast mode. Thickness. On like this. I'll go back here. Double click. Properties fast. One, two, one. Oh, it selected one to the back here that I don't want. I'll just turn it a little bit sideways. Proper, whoops. Properties fast. One, two, three, four. Enter. It, it confirms that I have four intervals. I'll create zone number two. Okay. I double click on mineralized intervals, generate planar envelope. I'll create the extend to be 40 meters like the other one. And I'll say, okay. And there, there's one thing that I want to show you that's very interesting. Uh, and this is the mid distance from other drill holes. If this extent here goes past the mid distance to another drill hole, I can use the use middle distance here. Maximum hole distance will be 80 meters. So it's the double of the 40 meters. That's very important. And then I click OK and I say yes. I'll create that volume blue, my favorite shading mode. And now I can see that there is there, there is that problem of intersecting envelopes and by, and I, actually this, this one is really too big in my opinion. Uh, I'll just change uh, the planar envelope, update, yes, and oops. Prism properties, oh, these, these are new. I'll just change that to 0 0.8 like this. Uh, and I'll change the extent to maybe 20. And so the maximum hole distance to look for will be 40. I'll say okay. 
okay, so now it's intersecting and I don't like that. And so I'll try to make it not intersecting. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that all looks good. So I double click on my planar envelope. I set envelope cutting constraints. I say envelope one, say okay. Maybe I have to update. And so someone tells me that this envelope goes too far. Is that it? Okay. Yes. Okay. Because, because this is an extension here, it will not work properly. Uh, apparently, we have to do that uh, we, with, uh, uh, we, we need the extents of the two envelopes uh, to be similar in order to, the, to work. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know if you can see here. If we have this case here, where the extents uh, cross each other, we have to change change them manually and I will show you how like I, I did before but if it does like this with an intersection inside the, the, the volume like this uh, this this will uh, solution will help so let's go on a section right here jump to section here I have the problem I'll create the geoline start here to the outside. New geoline and the tag is number two. And I'll set the geoline two right here. Okay, so now it's it's better. You see that there's no more intersection. I'll go back to my plan view. So there is still some intersection right here. I'll jump on my other section and I can create another geoline. Double click on my envelope, set. I make sure that I select the two geolines now. And here is better again. So now it's almost perfect. I think there's a small intersection, but you see how to work it out. Uh, so q and I uh, thank you for these questions. So I think that's it for the questions. So thank you very much for attending. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please contact me by email and uh, see you soon.